Patrick, to understand consciousness, we have to understand dreaming because dreaming is one of the most vivid, if not bizarre, parts of our conscious experience. Now, I know some people talk about the creativity in dreams, but dreams, if you think about it, have a lot of very strange kinds of manifestations from nightmares to people think they can predict the future in their dreams, the historical things. As a scientist looking at dreams, uh, how, how do you look at some of these more uh, outlying a activities? Hmm. Well, you mentioned nightmares, and I find them to be particularly fascinating for a theory of dreams. One of the one of the characteristics you see of REM dreams in particular, and especially nightmares. REM is rapid eye rap, movement. Rapid eye movement sleep. When the, the brain is very active. And you get most vivid dreams, is the presence of uh, male strangers and people's both males and females always have this in their rim dreams and especially in nightmares there's going to be one or two or three maybe male strangers lurking in the background somewhere there and if you score thousands of dream reports and you tabulate you know there's this character that character mm. whenever you get the presence of a male stranger not not a familiar ma male he has to be a stranger unknown there's going to be physical violence in the dream. Mm. There's going to be some sort of aggression between two of the characters, mm. or an animal might appear and create physical violence. Mm. So that's really interesting, huh? You get you get a dream code there, the beginnings of a dream code. Male stranger, you're going to get violence, mm. aggression. Mm. That's the beginning of really un un unraveling uh, the content of dreams. Mm -hmm. Now this goes back to Freud, who had some maybe radical ideas about dreams, but at least was saying that there's symbolism in dreams. We may disagree with the, with the symbolism that he had, but there is some sense of dreams meaning stuff. Exactly, yeah, that there's, dreams are about something. Um, and there's lots of theories about what dreams are about, Freud has his. But this this very simple fact, okay? Male strangers, you're going to get physical aggression. That's that's a very reliable finding, and that tells me that that dreams are not just bizarre, random uh, things that just you know fluff of the mind at yeah. night. No, <laughs> there's something serious going on here. Uh, so how can we begin to explore that? I mean, nightmares. We all have nightmares, either to a greater or lesser degree, and sometimes it's you know if I ate let too late at night or had particular stress, but sometimes for no reason at all. So. Uh, how do you begin to, to, to begin to, what else can we see about nightmares? Well, they tend to, I mean, as with any other scientific enterprise, you start to document what's correlated with the phenomena, what's the, you know, what are the basic facts. Nightmares tend to occur in REM sleep, and they tend to occur in, in people with certain personality profiles. Like what? Well, they tend to be women with thin boundaries. They're known as thin boundaries, so there's... They don't separate themselves from what's going on around them too well. So if you have thin boundaries in which... Uh, and you're female. You will more likely have nightmares. And have repetitive nightmares. I see. Not just one every now and then, but, you know, two or three a week. And bad enough that you remember them and they haunt you. Now, you asked, you asked earlier about what are some uncanny things associated with nightmares and dreams. One of the most interesting ones in nightmares is... For somebody to call a dream a nightmare, there typically has to be some sort of what I call a demonic element in the in the nightmare. Mm. A monster. Mm. Not not just a male stranger, yeah. not just a threatening figure, huh? but something monstrous, something that really starts to incite terror. Uh. And that's when you're going to remember the nightmare. And that's when the nightmare really starts to have effects on daily activity as well. Yeah, I mean, if I, if I have a nightmare, I mean, it does unnerve me a bit during the day. And, and if you follow somebody who has repetitive nightmares and you follow them over a couple of years, you watch what happens with this demonic elements. The first, the first reports are he is off in the background somewhere and he's threatening the dreamer somehow. But in, as, as the dream reports come, the demon or the monster gets closer to the dream self, to the dream ego, to the dreaming person. Now he's in the same room as the person. And then the nightmares, nightmares get worse and worse. And you know, that's when they start to go see a doctor. And then the, the demon or the monster is now right in front of them and is threatening to do something to them. And then finally, the, the demon or the monster is chasing them, and they're going to possess their consciousness. Hmm. 
It's sort of like a spirit possession phenomenon. And, and this is this is a, a, a generic phenomenon. I mean, you can. This see is what you see when you analyze hundreds and hundreds of nightmare reports mm. from longitudinal studies. So you got several night re nightmare reports from the same individual. Yeah. So what, what are the implications of that in terms of the nature of consciousness? It certainly indicates it's a lot, a lot of subconscious stuff that, that, that bubble up into our consciousness. I would say what it indicates is that nightmares and dreams in general are about the self. And the monster's interested in the self, in you. Mm, mm. <laughs> he's not interested in other things going on. He's, he's after you yeah. and in, he's in a big in, way. not interested in stealing your money. No. <laughs> <laughs> he wants to devour your identity uh. in, until you are dissolved away. Yeah. You know, it's probably what a schizophrenic feels when, when they're having a having an episode of psychosis, like they're literally just fragmenting away. And that's what nightmare sufferers report as well. So, I mean, to be clear, we're talking about extreme cases here. We're not talking about the Repetitive, normal person right. who has a nightmare has like I might nightmare. ever saw. So, Although so. That, th these monstrous elements occur in those too, but I'm talking about people with repetitive nightmare disorder. Right, right. You know, over several years, right, and uh, and, and it's it's a sense of loss of the self, whether they're going to be eaten right. by an animal or possessed in some way, and and, right. and they they are destroyed in that process. That's right. It's sort of in what Artie Lang used to call ontological insecurity. You know, your very <laughs> self is up for grabs. So what that suggests, in turn, is that dreams and nightmares are about the self. It, mm. it, it's about constructing a self. Mm. If um, what's going on in repetitive nightmares is a dissolution of the self, and you know what we're really talking about is a breakdown of the dreaming mechanism, mm. that's what nightmares are, then what the dreaming mechanism probably does on a normal basis is build up this self-structure. Uh, uh. And you need that self-structure during the daytime for consciousness. So I would make the argument that dreams are absolutely fundamental to day daytime consciousness. What about... Um people who, throughout history, who've reported some uh, psychic ex aspects of dreams, whether knowing the future, I dreamed that my uh, brother was in an accident and then they yeah. had an automobile accident, you know, the next day or something. I mean, statistically, it may be easy to prove that these things are more random than people expect. The only time you would notice it is when it did happen and you never notice the time that didn't happen so statistically it's meaningless uh, but I don't know about that I don't think the, the there have been good studies on it to you know, I don't think we should just dismiss them as you know co coincidences when you when you read report after report after report down through the centuries every culture reports these quote unquote precognitive dreams there's something to it I don't know what I'm not saying that these dreams do predict the future. I'm not saying that, but I'm saying there's something interesting going on, and it's not been rigorously investigated yet. Well, that, that, that's a very uh, mild scientific uh, view that you're taking, but, but what you're saying is pretty radical. I mean, face it. Yeah, um, yeah. There, I, well, no, I don't think so. I mean, to say that there's something interesting about these so-called precognitive dreams, I think, is almost a banal statement. <laughs> they are pretty interesting. Well, yeah, okay. You know, all right, uh, all right, now, what, what they really are, that's a different matter. Well, the question is, are they statistically uh, random? Certainly, if I have a statistically random dream that my sister is in an accident, she's in an accident, that'll affect me. That'll be an emotional experience. But it won't say anything about the nature of consciousness or the nature of reality because it was a coincidence. But all I'm saying is that hasn't been demonstrated that it's just a coincidence. It has not been demonstrated. Well, and somebody should investigate it. <laughs> you know? So looking at the totality of, uh, of dreams, especially these, uh, these bizarre offshoots, the nightmares, the precognitive dreams, uh, uh, you, you really can't uh, you really can't understand consciousness without dealing with this. I, I completely agree. You can't understand the self without dreams. And you can't understand consciousness without understanding the self. So to really get at you know, the nature and functions of the self, what is this thing we call identity? What is that? Who, who are we really? It's worthwhile looking at dreams because dreams are very intimately involved in constructing what Freud called the ego identity.